Howdy folks. In this video, I'm going to show you a few ways to deal with the error there's not enough space available on the disks to complete this operation. So let's get started. First thing you can try is clicking on your start button. Type in the word disk and you should see disk cleanup as an option. Uh, you can either click here where it says run as administrator or right click on it and choose run as administrator if that option is not available on the right hand side. So we'll just wait for the disk cleanup utility to come on. And the first thing it will do is this calculation of how much space there is available on your drive to clean up. Eventually you will end up with a list like this here and you'll be able to see the various things that you can clean up so you can scroll up and down in that list and say here we have uh, 230 megabytes of windows upgrade log files we don't need those anti old antivirus update files essentially um, unless you have a great need to keep any of this. Um, downloads might be an area that you do want to keep if any of your downloads are important. Um, to me, they aren't at this case. So go ahead and check off all the boxes that you would like to apply the cleanup to and then click OK. It'll ask you if you're sure you want to delete these. Go ahead, of course, and say delete files and it will clean up that space for you. Now that may be enough. Oh, here we have a prompt. If you clean up the previous Windows installations or temporary installation files, you will no longer be able to restore the machine back to previous versions of Windows. I don't mind that. I do want to do this, so I'm going to click on yes. And a previous Windows installation can be a lot of space if that's what it's cleaning up. Here we are just reaching the end of the cleanup. I paused recording for the bulk of it. And when the uh, utility is finished, it will just close itself and disappear from your screen. So that's one great way to start. Uh, now I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, free utilities that you can try that can help as well. So let's go online and we'll go to ccleaner.com. Make sure that's the actual domain that you're on. You don't want to get something bundled with spyware or something. And they have a free download. So let's go ahead and get that. Get this comparison list here. I'm going to download the free version on the left. Save the file. And we're going to run it. Say yes to the prompt. I'll close the browser. Now they've just started bundling uh, like Google Chrome and there's also, um, <clears throat> I believe they have a CCleaner browser that kind of thing. Um, you want to uncheck those if you don't want them. There's also a customize. I like to uncheck uh, the bottom bits and just leave the top uh, desktop shortcut and start menu shortcuts activated and then go ahead and install. And I don't need to view the release notes. So I uncheck that and click run CCleaner. Now um, this is just updating a a copy I already had on my system. So some of the options are already tweaked, but I'm going to show you the options that I tend to uh, change. So I uncheck here, help improve CCleaner by sending anonymous usage data, because who wants to be spied on, right? I go into advanced and I uncheck only to de delete files in the uh, recycle bin older than 24 hours and only delete files in Windows temp folder older than 24 hours. I uncheck those. And um, under updates, I uncheck this box, I uncheck this box. 
And what else do we have? Under smart cleaning, I uncheck everything and it will prompt you and say, hey, are you sure about this? Don't be crazy. And you say, yeah, I'm sure. Right. And then uh, then I feel, let's see, under settings, I like to choose custom clean. And what else here? Uh, I think that is. Yeah, and I like the advanced report. OK, so once you've got that tweaked to your satisfaction, there's other options you can browse. Of course, I go into custom clean. All right. Uh, warnings here would be if you want your internet internet history to be saved, uncheck that. So uh, if you uncheck for each browser, internet history, cookies, download history, last download location, and recently typed URLs, uh, you will have um, sort of that back record that you might be expecting and using. A lot of people don't use that at all. But if you do it all and you say you don't want to have to retype in your bank card number when you go to the bank or whatever, uh, uncheck those. Leave the index, that files, the cache ones, temporary internet files, leave those ones ch uh, checked. All right. Um, let's see other things down here. Well, you can see what I've checked off here if you want to study it. This is my recommendation on this tab. And then under applications, again, you might want to uncheck these bits here if you want to keep your history, but keep the cache and session ones checked for uh, Firefox and Google Chrome, right? And uh, anything else down here that you want to check off that's unchecked, you might want to hit that as well. And then go ahead and hit Run Cleaner. And you may get a prompt that says, uh, hey, this will uh, delete files. Are you sure? And I check, don't show me this again, and yes, I'm sure. And then it goes through. So here we go. Uh, this is a pretty clean machine. I only have 164 megabytes being removed at this time. But I have seen it go as high as like 16 gig or more um, when I'm tweaking customers' computers, etc. Right. So you can, you can um, clean up a lot of data here, particularly if it's the first time you've run this utility, it can be really good. They also have a nice uh, registry cleaner, um, which I've run on many, many machines. I've never had an issue with it. Um, so uh, I feel pretty safe recommending it. I've used CCleaner for years uh, to great effect. So what you do is you scan for issues and you get a list of things, um, just junk that's accumulated in the registry that they can identify as junk. Then I, you click on fix selected issues in the lower right, fix all issues in the prompt that comes up and close that. And I find that you often have to run it a few times before it's actually clear because some registry items depend on others. And when you clean some, others become junk, if, you, if that uh, makes sense to you. So uh, I just keep going through it until it says there's nothing found. Sometimes you'll get a couple of registry entries that won't leave and they'll just keep finding them over and over and over again. Don't worry about those. Just stop stop scanning and trying to clean them. Um, they're protected by uh, whatever settings in the registry and, and CCleaner is just not going to be able to kill them for you. Um, and then under tools, uh, system restore. Sometimes there's a whole bunch of restore points in here. Uh, the top one will be grayed out because they won't delete the latest restore point. But if you're pretty happy with the stability of your system and you've got like 30 restore points, uh, the top one grayed out, delete. You can select the bottom 29, you know, click on the first one and then shift, uh, click on the last one, hold down the shift key and click on the last one. That'll select the whole group and then hit the remove button. And, uh, and restore points can take up a huge amount of room on your system as well. So that's a great way to save some space all right so um, ccleaner can help remove total gigabytes of space from your system above and beyond the disk clean right and then another thing uh, is if we go and click on the start button and um, uh, no I, I, I was gonna say type in power but let's type in control for control panel and go into the control panel Make sure that uh, small icons is the view, right? To make this easy. And then we want to go to power options. And then whatever your 
um, your plan is, the, the selected one, click on change plan settings and then change advanced power settings and then go under sleep and uh, just make sure that your computer is not set to hibernate at any point. There's not a lot of, this isn't a laptop, there's not a lot of power options here, so I'm not actually seeing um, the area that I want to here. But, um, yeah, like even here under power buttons and lid, make sure that, that uh, well, hibernate's not even an option here. Just make sure that hibernate isn't set anywhere in your settings under under sleep or what have you. And uh, that may get rid of the a hibernation file, which is uh, in the root of C and um, can take up several gigabytes, as much gigabytes as you have memory. So if you've got a 12 gig of memory on your system, it'll be a 12 gig file. So getting rid of that um, can be very beneficial as well for adding space to your system. And then uh, once you've done all that, uh, another great utility is uh, one called tree size. So um, let's go ahead and do a search for that. So it is by Jam Software. So you want to make sure that's the URL that you're going to, right? So we're going to go there and we're going to download that and download again. Save the file. You know, your download sequence could be different. I'm using Firefox. This is, uh, you might be on Google Chrome or Edge. God help you. <laughs> Anyway, here we go. Uh, here's the setup file we want to run. Say yes to allow that. Close the browser to avoid distractions. And let's go ahead and click through on the install. We finish. Now, this is how it works. So as I go to this PC, and you're going to right click on your disk and you're going to click on tree size free okay and probably if you're like me you'll get this box that says uh, restart and request admin privileges so that all folders can be checked out so i like to check always start as an administrator and then that way uh, you get this prompt here and it'll have sufficient rights to do what it needs to do let's just close that Again, and we'll maximize this. So this is this is the tree size free um, uh, results window. Okay. So again, this is this is just a make videos machine. So there's not a lot on here. But what it does is it organizes all of your um, folders by how much they have in them. So right now my biggest space hog is the Windows folder. Okay. And, you know, uh, it, this all looks normal. I've, I've seen Windows folders up to 40 gig they can take, um, which again, is relatively normal. Um, so if anything between this and 40 uh, is pretty normal, I would not be cleaning up and deleting any Windows folders, right? Um, that, you know, that's just dangerous, right? Uh, unless you really know what you're doing, if you're, you know, some kind of super tech, uh, go ahead. But um, just make sure that it's not going to prevent you from restarting your computer. But uh, say usually under users here, you might have uh, a bunch of things uh, that you don't just don't need anymore. Sometimes it's old backups. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, uh, TV shows that you've downloaded or whatever. But but the the main point here is that uh, this will help you identify huge space hogs, right? So you can you kind of expand these folders and find out what is taking up so much space. Maybe maybe under uh, program files, you have some game or so, like you can be looking through here and you might have a game that's taking up 60 gig or something that uh, you installed as a trial or whatever and you just no longer use, right? So um, You'll know. Yeah, if I under if I uninstall that game, I'll save 60 gigabyte of data. Uh, I'll add 60 gig 
free to my drive. So, so this is this is great for um, identifying uh, unexpected space hogs, right? I had a customer today who had um, it was a 102 gigabyte in an old backup uh, for a backup system that hasn't been running for a handful of years. Uh, that was just sitting in his his public documents folder, and uh, he was down to around 20 gig free and running into a few issues because of that. And of course, once we moved that off of his system onto an external backup drive, as a you know backup an archive of older backups, uh, his disk was suddenly um, like 50 plus percent free because it has a small SSD drive, right, which is his main drive. So, so things like this, uh, like this utility can really help. Anyway, that is my advice on uh, regaining space for your hard drive. The only thing I would add to that is if you do have, uh, you know, like a huge photo collection or something like that, seriously consider uh, just getting an extra drive, some uh, external drive and pulling them all over onto there, right? Just just keep in mind that if you have, if, if they're really important to you, you should always have really important stuff in two places. So if you really, if you were really serious about moving a lot of data off your system, off your system drive onto another drive, just make sure that you have two other drives, one to put it on and one to back it up on. Right, so one for you know actual use of browsing and adding and updating and whatever, and then that drive should be backed up. That's the system I have, is I have an external drive, so many terabytes that holds my data, and um, well, actually it's an internal drive that holds my data, and it gets backed up to an, an external drive, but it is a separate drive from my system drive. Hopefully this has been useful information to you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and you know hit that little bell.